Uh, thank you for coming. This is uh, the, in the 16th week of the interfaith uh, prayers for the nation and the world. We need lots of prayer for this nation and for this world. And mm -hmm. for those uh, who are here uh, joining us first time, I am Tomiko Dagan, uh, Senior Vice President of the Universal Peace Federation, uh, USA. And uh, so this program and, uh, is initiated by IAPD, Interfaith Association for Peace and Development. This uh, IAPD is uh, the project of the Universal Peace Federation. Uh, Universal Peace Federation uh, is an NGO, non-governmental organization uh, in general consultative status uh, with the Economic and Social Council of the UN. So our founder, co-founder of UPA, Dr. Hak Jihan Moon, known as Mother of Peace, believes faith leaders will play a unique and vital role for healing wounded souls and ending divisions, hatred, selfish ambitions, and providing wisdoms, valuable lessons, the understanding of the nature of God and the love of mm -hmm. others. I would like to now invite our uh, moderator of this program, Archbishop George August Starrings Jr., the founder and great spiritual leader of the Imani Temple, African American Catholic Congregation, and our national chair for the IAPD. Thank you, Dr. Archbishop Starrings. Floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mrs. Tomiko Duggan our senior vice president of the Universal Peace Federation, and a special welcome to all who are participating in our weekly Universal Peace Federation interfaith prayer service. We have three distinguished, renowned spiritual and religious leaders who will be presenting today, who will share with us a passage from their sacred scriptures if they so desire, followed by a prayer and a comment or a reflection today. And each uh, religious leader will have, each faith leader will have approximately four to five minutes uh, for that presentation. Uh, our first presenter will be uh, one whom I would describe as a paradigm, as a paragon, a paragon of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding who has this insatiable love for humanity. He and his beloved wife are really a true living example of a blessed central family, a couple, a couple who have dedicated themselves to spreading the word of God by the way they live, not just by what they say, but by the way they live. I have been blessed to have been associated with them for 20 years, visiting uh, Asia um, a, dozen, a couple of dozen times to uh, Israel. And each time he brings that, that shofar with him and he blows it and everyone uh, is excited by his energy and his enthusiasm. Uh, he's a very youthful man. Uh, his, his appearance, uh, you know, will, will fool you because he is more youthful than most of us are. He is the distinguished uh, chief priest of the Rajnani Mandir or the first Hindu temple uh, in the metropolitan area of Washington, D.C., and he has been the chief priest at that first Hindu temple since 1985. Uh, he is, has touched uh, the lives of many and has intersected with many important luminaries that we know around the world, such as uh, Mother Teresa, uh, the great Dalai Lama, uh, the Prime, Prime Minister Nehru, he goes way back, doesn't he? Uh, the great Prime Minister Indiri Gandhi, and I could go on and on. He has known them, he has met them, he has been involved with them. There's a saying that uh, Minister Gupta has, uh, the message that he gives, he says, oh God, let all unite and protect themselves, uh, protect themselves, let us render service to others and let our studies be beneficial and effective to all humankind. Let there be no hatred among us. I present to you our beloved brother from the Hindu faith, the Hindu faith, uh, none other than Minister Amar Nath Gupta. Minister Gupta. <laughs> Thank 
Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace on the beautiful earth. Our two parents, Heavenly Father, and our two Mother of Peace, bless us for bringing the peace on the beautiful planet. And Mother has provided this book. Please, please read this. Each and every sentence of this book leads us towards the peace. Peace cannot be given. Peace cannot be distributed. Peace cannot be by. It comes from heart, mind, and soul, which our Father Masiha, Dr. Sanyan Moon, has given to us. And now our mother is giving to all of us. That's why always Hindu prayer start with peace. Om Shanti Shanti. First of all, Om Bhur Bhavah Savat Savitar Vareniyam Bhargo Devatya Dhimai Dhiyo Yonaham Prachodeha The meaning Om, having three words, as God is having three words. G-O-D, O-E-M-A, means giver of life, bestower of happiness, and expeller of disease. G generator, O operator, and D destructor. So God is the giver of life, bestower of happiness, and expeller of miseries. Why not we should meditate upon Almighty God who has given us a great intellect to put on this beautiful earth? You can get everything in your life. You can get money. You can get a lot of fame in your life. You can run thousands of business but you cannot get one thing. What is that? That is called Shanti, peace, peace, peace. That's why with the unification, Father has given us an, an, an internally excellent peace in our mind. That's why we are one family under the God. Let me do the peace prayer. Om Dhyo Shanti Antarikshavam Shanti Prithavi Shanti Ra Paha Shanti Ro Shadhaya Shanti Vanaspatya Shanti Vishve Devaha Shanti Brahma Shanti Sarvagam Shanti Shanti Revaha Shanti Shama Shanti Redi Om Shanti 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 For peace who have requested heaven, earth, medicine, meditation, learned stages, education, educator, that from each and every angle, we must get the peace so our life should be peaceful. That's why Father united 120 colleges and sent 120 countries. I remember that day on which first we went to Korea and there was a meeting. And fortunately, they have selected me also. But near DMG, I lost my voice. Dr. Denkin came and Dr. Uh, 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 I forgot his name. He came to me. He said, what happened? I say I cannot go. And my voice has gone. I can only write. So why you are taking a dead horse for this moment? Then, no, 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 no. This is the order of father, and you have to go. I say, how I can go? He said, had we not told you this is the order of father, you will not believe. Immediately, I got my voice again back, and we went to 120 countries, 120 priests. Three and a half months, we were out of America, out of Korea, and everywhere, everywhere. We have seen people have given us such a great respect and peace was distributed among all nations in a form that even the head of that state, means India, went to Afghanistan, Korea, Korea Japan, England, Finland, 
everywhere, even the head of the state were peaceful and they were regarding our father's mission like a peaceful, big peaceful mission. So for peace, we have requested heaven, earth medicine, that peace come, should, should come to our mind, soul, and happiness. We, if we cannot give even peace to our neighbor, it means we are not doing anything. So we are one family under God, and God has given, Father has, Mother has given us peace. Om Sena Bhavatu Saino Bhavantu Saviriam Karva Vahi Tijas Pina Madhumas Tuma as Reverend Stalin told that our last word is that we should unite together, protect ourselves. There should be no hatred among us, service of the community, service of the nation, service of the world is the service of God. That was the motto of our two parents. That's why we are having not a single place left in the world where we don't have the UPF. All I have visited more than 120 UPF offices and they are doing a great job to promote the peace. That's why we are one family under God, ah, Jew. Thank you. Oh, amen. Ah, ah, thank you. Thank you so much, Minister Gupta. Namaste. That was, that was just wonderful. The God in me greets the God in you. The God in me recognizes the presence of the God in you. The God in me reverences and worships the God in you. Thank you, Minister Gupta. Thank you. For representing the, the best of, of the Hindi faith. Representing the Christian uh, community is a woman who found her purpose in the midst of deep prayer and a season of solitude and an, an activation dream. Uh, she served with distinction in the U.S. Uh, Army and the National Guard, giving, putting up her life in defense of freedom and, and justice and equality. She's a native of Chicago, Illinois, and uh, she was ordained a, a minister in the uh, powerhouse International Ministries, and currently she is under the spiritual leadership of the Reverend Dr. Jacqueline Powell and, and Pastor uh, R. Edward Powell of Augusta Christian Church. We heard we were with uh, the Powells on last week, and what a powerful uh, prayer and message that uh, Dr. Edward Powell delivered. And now we 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 are we're here have an opportunity to share in more of that great fruit. <clears throat> he is Pastor Anoni Elmore. And currently, as I said, at Augusta a Christian a Church in Chicago, uh, and we are honored by her presence, especially a woman who found her real calling, her purpose in life through a beautiful uh, spiritual journey. And I know that what she will share with us now will touch each one of us deeply. Let us receive uh, Pastor Anoni Elmore. Thank you, Archbishop Stalins. I just thank you for this opportunity to share on this platform. I thank you, PF, for actually having a platform like this. So this means a lot. And I also give thanks to my spiritual leadership, Apostle Jacqueline Powell and Pastor Randy Powell. <clears throat> uh, today, today, the scripture I would like to read from is 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. And in this particular, on this particular verse, it says, finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. And just to elaborate briefly on this particular, in this particular letter, Paul is writing to the church, but he's also writing to this church that he had established. But even in this writing to the church, what it is, is they have a couple of people that are in place, but they're, it's, they're causing division. And what this actually shows us is that it doesn't take a lot of people to cause disruption or division. So as we can even see in the world today, it's only the acts of one or two bad ones that can throw everyone off. And so what I thought was really enlightening by reading this verse itself is that Paul is just telling them, you know, do a self-examination. One of the things he's asking them to do is examine yourself. 
See if you believe what you're confessing. See if you believe what you say you're standing for. And then if you do that, and then you can be in agreement and you can work with other people. You don't have to think the same way. You don't even have to like the same things, uh -huh. but you can work together and still love each other. Yes. And so I thought that was befitting for the times that we're in right now. <clears throat> And in that, I would like to go ahead and close out with a prayer. So Father, first and foremost, I just wanna thank you for, the, for what you're doing in the world today. That's for the things that we can see and the things that are unseen, the things that are happening in the realm of the spirit. We also want to repent on behalf of the actions of those in our countries, individual countries and governments who may have a part to play in any form of oppression, any form of, uh, uh, injustice where it has been chosen against a select group of people or any race of people. We repent on their behalf. And because you are forgiving, Father, we receive forgiveness on that on that front. And we thank you, Lord, that even we understand that you hear our prayers and our petitions. Mm -hmm. So even as we pray, even as we join together on today, Father, I thank you, though I may stand on the in the stead of the Christian faith or Christian belief, right now on this platform, we have someone that represents different nations. We represent different geographical locations. We represent different generations. We mm -hmm. represent different colors. We represent mm -hmm. different genders. We represent different mindsets. And because of that, we have linked ourselves together. And because we have linked ourselves together, we are now a united front for peace. So no matter what's going on in the world today, because we have joined our faiths together and because we are not focusing on our differences, but we're focusing on one yes. purpose. And yes. that's a purpose of peace. And because we are standing in the stead of peace, we are now also representing every place that we're coming from. We're representing different bloodlines. We're representing different, like I said, different beliefs and different backgrounds. We're yes. representing and we're now the fence that stands yes. firm. Yes and says, no, we will yes. see peace yes. upon the earth. And because we're standing firm, we know that you shall move on our behalf. And because even as we stand in faith, there is no one here that does not have faith in what mm. they believe. And mm. that's the whole purpose of faith. Believing in something which you, that you cannot see, but expecting a seen result. So Father, I thank you right now, even as we stand believing for peace, that nothing will shake us, nothing will stop us. And even in that scripture verse, allow us to even examine ourselves to make sure that we are dispensing the peace that we are believing for. Make sure that we are now peace agents. So no matter where we go, we represent peace. No matter what's going on around us, we represent peace. We speak mm. peace, we mm. breathe peace, no mm. matter what we exude peace. Mm. So I thank you for that opportunity to thank share you. peace with mm. my fellow brothers and sisters. So it, again, it doesn't matter what we believe, we all know this, no matter where you from, if you get cut, you will bleed. If you break a bone, you will hurt. If you lose a loved one, you feel the pain. So mm. let us unite in that, let us stand yes. firm in that. Not that we welcome even the pandemic mm. that's on the earth, but I know, God, that you can use any situation and turn it around for our good. So I thank you even in the midst of a coronavirus that you have allowed mm. families to become reunited. You have allowed families to begin to spend time together. You have allowed us to start making the main thing the main thing. You have allowed us to start seeing what's really a priority, to start loving each other once again. So thank you, Lord, again for this opportunity and for everyone who is present, past, present, or even the future calls and the future connections. You need to understand that this moment right now makes you a world changer. No matter what's going on in the world, just because you chose to participate, you are now a world changer. It doesn't matter what you see in your neighborhood or around you, because you now linked up and said you want peace on the earth, you are now a world changer. And Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise for that in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey. Pastor, Pastor Anoni Elmore, you are a powerhouse. <laughs> you, I think you took a lot of the us. national ministries with what you were anointed <laughs> with that. You are Paul. Thank you for that. Paul, wow. that, that you were spoken with conviction. I could I could just feel every ounce of your your energy in that prayer and, and you touched us deeply. Thank <clears> you for that so much. Amen. Amen. You're Amen. welcome. Give our best to 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 Pastor uh, Jacqueline Paul and Pastor, you know, 
I Thank sure you. will. <laughs> and our love, express our love to them. Uh, our final uh, religious uh, presenter, our, our presenter today, and what the, the reason why this person is so distinguished because he'll tell you right up front that he is a devout Muslim, uh, but he is not an imam or a religious leader, but wears many hats, many other hats, including uh, an academic hat as well as being a, a strategist, a social activist, uh, a promoter of democracy, peace, justice, and interfaith community. He is originally from uh, Pakistan and he has done a lot of volunteer work there and led efforts to establish a charity hospital in his mother's name, Sakina, to fo that focuses on neonatal and maternal health care in one of the poorest areas of Pakistan. Uh, he uh, is, is in Virginia, in Northern Virginia now. Uh, I'm very much involved in the Muslim faith community. And he uh, received, uh, he holds a doctor of science degree from George Washington University, as well as an MBA from the University of Ottawa in Canada. So you can see uh, why he is a distinguished uh, presenter today and why even though not an imam or religious leader, his faith informs all of the things that uh, he engages in, and he can really stand as an example to so many others who may not be a pastor, an imam, or, or a rabbi, but just a man living out his faith each and every day. Let us receive now our beloved brother from the Muslim faith, Dr. Akbar Kawaja. Thank you so much uh, for the introduction. Assalamu alaikum and peace be upon you. Alaykum. Let me begin with a short prayer, then I'll share with you some verses from Holy Quran and we'll conclude it with a brief message. Let's pray in the name of God, most merciful, most compassionate. Almighty God of heaven and universe, our creator, we ask you to forgive us. We seek refuge in your love, kindness, compassion, and mercy. You are the most forgiving, the most merciful. God Almighty, the most high, we thank you for bringing us together at this time of pain and difficulty. We mourn the death of thousands of our fellow human beings all over the globe who died because of pandemic virus. God Almighty, the Most High, we pray to you for those who are victims and suffering because of inequalities, injustice, or racial and religious divide. We pray for all those involved in reconciliation effort for peace and justice for all. We pray for all those who are providing help and support for the poor and needy during this difficult time. Lord of Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, all the prophets and messengers, O oh God Almighty, the merciful and compassionate, we turn to you at this difficult and challenging time. We belong to you, we depend upon you, we need you, amen. Let me take a pause and continue with the first surah from Holy Quran, Surah Fatiha, followed by a brief message about Islam. Bismillah rahman rahim in the name of Allah, the merciful, the compassionate. Praise be to Allah, the Lord of entire universe, the merciful, the compassionate, the master of the day of the recompense and judgment. You alone do we worship and you alone do we turn for help. Direct us onto the straight way, the way of those whom you have favored and bless, who did not incur your wrath, who are not astray. I mean, and this was from Al-Quran chapter one, verses yeah. 1-7. Now let me conclude with a brief message about Islam. The Arabic word Islam literally means submission. As a faith, Islam means total and sincere surrender to God so that one can live in peace and tranquility. Allah is an Arabic word meaning the one true God who created the heaven and universe. For a Muslim, Allah is the greatest and most inclusive of names for God, denoting the one who is adored and worshiped, the one who created all that exists. For a Muslim, there are six basic articles of faith, belief in one God, belief in God's angels, belief in God's books and all his scriptures, belief in God's prophet and his messengers, 
belief in the day of judgment, belief in God's divine decree. For a Muslim, five obligatory act of worship include declaration of faith, offering five daily prayers, paying charity in zakah, observing fasting, and oh. making pilgrimage hajj. Oh, Quranic verse 1419 13 mentioned that belongs to different ethnic identities, not a matter that confers superiority, but rather is intended to enhance a human interaction and harmony. Meanwhile, it is only virtue and piety that makes one more honorable in the sight of God, not one's skin, color, or ethnicity. Friends, we all love God Almighty, our Creator, but we are also obliged to love His creation, our fellow human beings. All religious communities have a role to play to strengthen dialogue and engagement, to foster greater operational collaboration and partnership to protect our shared humanity. Interfaith communication is not between faith, but within the people discussing it. I thank you for your attention, and I would like to extend my appreciation and note of thanks to our host, UPF, Ms. Dugan, Dr. Jenkins, our moderator, Dr. Yes. Stallings, fellow speakers, and all of you in attendance. May God bless all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Shukran, shukran, shukran. Thank you so much, Dr. Akbar Kawaja. You know, you gave, that was a great uh, presentation today. Uh, uh, it was a refresher course for me. I taught uh, an introductory course on Islam uh, last summer. Uh, at our I Am Institute. And as you were sharing with us the, the, the main principles of the Islamic faith, oh, it, it, was, it just brought joy to my heart that uh, it refreshed what I, I shared with uh, other students uh, last summer. Thanks Thank you to, so much for the opportunity. Uh, we are blessed. Our pleasure. Now to put the icing on the cake, we bring before you the distinguished, venerable, the esteemed, Chairman of the Universal Peace Federation, Reverend Dr. Michael William Jenkins, my beloved brother from another mother and my inspiration, my mentor, and who the one who has really helped me to grow and expand in my horizons uh, of the different faith expressions. And it's a joy to work next to him. Let us receive now Dr. Michael Jenkins. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Archbishop George Augustus Stallings, Jr. Every day at 12 noon, Archbishop Stallings, under the Facebook name of George Stallings, does the most amazing spiritual <laughs> teaching and biblical edification that is bringing so many through this time of the pandemic. We sincerely pray for all of your families and all of your believers and faith communities that they can be comforted over the loss of loved ones or the illnesses, and that they can also be strengthened by God to overcome all these challenges. We believe that the prayers of the righteous availeth much, as the scripture says, and your prayers when combined together beyond your own faith community, joining with all the children of Abraham, all the children of God or the people of God, it has an exponential spiritual power to multiply the effectiveness of your prayer to heal, to, to, to also give hope and strength. And I want to thank Dr. Amarnath Gupta, Shanti, Namaste. We love you, Dr. Gupta. You have led the UPF interfaith programs now for 20 years, and you've taken us all over the world, and we're just deeply grateful for you. And Pastor Anani Elmore, uh, you and, and Dr. Jacqueline Powell are such a blessing to us, and her husband, uh, Reverend R. Powell. We're just deeply moved by your presentation and the reading of the scripture. We know that you are a person that's anointed with a great power to really help bring all the community beyond the boundaries of fear into the, into the light of Jesus and the light of God. And Dr. Akbar, Kawaja, we love you deeply. We've known each other for years, and you are one of the great, great Muslim scholars and leaders. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. And Islam needs to submit, and we should follow that teaching. That teaching is a fundamental teaching from 
uh, Allah. There's no no doubt. We should submit our every part of our life to God. It's so beautiful. So we also pray for this nation. And we pray that the strife in this nation can be healed by love. We believe that love is the only power that can really heal it. Our founder, Dr. Hak Jahan Moon, is the mother of peace, and she is promoting love in every nation and culture. And Dr. Akbar, as you know, Mother Moon has had enormous reception uh, last year when she made 20 trips uh, around the world, and most of them were in Africa. Archbishop Stallings went with Mother Moon to Senegal, and I was blessed to be there. And we went to the slave house in Gory Island, and we prayed there. And she prayed that all people could be liberated from this pain, not only the people who are victims, but also the people who are led by evil to do evil things. We pray for all to be liberated. And I believe that she goes forth now with this beautiful autobiography, The Mother of Peace. This autobiography is touching people deeply. So we pray that you can all enjoy that, that memoir that's on Amazon.com. We, we pray you can be with us. Also, we're starting the Peace Road. And where are we going? We're going to the epicenter of when the first Africans came to America, 1619, in Point Comfort in Hampton, Virginia. We're going to the very point epicenter of where they landed. And the sad history evolved from that time, but we are encouraged because we're also going to the places where the African people became the greatest Christian leaders. We're going to Martin Luther King's memorial in Atlanta. We're going to the Underground Railroad where uh, Christians of other communities broke through and helped their brothers and sisters come out of the chains and we work together. We can only break the chains if we all come together. So I'm so grateful for this day and and for this prayer, I'd like to ask you to join me in one moment of silent prayer for the healing of everyone who's afflicted with the pandemic, the healing of their hearts if they lost loved ones, and the end of the conflict between all peoples. We pray for the reconciliation of all people. Let's join together in a moment of silent prayer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. May God be with you and bless your family and all your relatives and everyone you love. And I'd like to turn this back over to our illustrious Vice President, Tommy Duggan. Thank you. Dr. Jenkins, <clears throat> thank you so much. Uh, I learned also from this uh, previous meeting, your ancestors arrived at the Jamestown. Yes. It's amazing uh, yes. <laughs> to trace your ancestors. So uh, very much you are uh, really working for the reconciliation of all races. It's really amazing. <clears throat> Just one thing I want to promote Pardon. also uh, for this coming Thursday, it's the fourth Sunday of July. <clears throat> uh, since 1994, uh, President Clinton signed on the uh, National uh, Parents Day. So UPF is uh, inviting all of us to join us on the webinar on this coming Sunday, which we uh, just to uh, got all kinds of uh, nominate nominations. And finally, we got the top 12 and then top three. And then so the announcement will be made on this coming Sunday. Please join us uh, to celebrate and to honor the outstanding parents. It's going to be on Sunday the uh, July 26 at 4 p.m. You will receive invitation flyer to all of you. So, and also uh, next week, we are um, especially uh, coming uh, rabbi, coming from uh, Jerusalem. Once again, I would like Wonderful. to thank you, thank Miri. You. I think Dr. Starling and then uh, Dr. Jenkins, you know them, I'm not going to tell <laughs> yet, but uh, he is happy to join us from Jerusalem next yep. Thursday. So we will see you all on Sunday and then Thursday next week. Thank Vice you. For Doug, one, one final remark. I would like to also thank those like Reverend Bento Leal, who has joined us today. Oh, yes. Of course, Bishop Barnett, Dr. Jacqueline Powell's here, Dr. David, uh, David uh, from uh, Indiana, uh, David Carlson, and also Reverend Sun Willits here, and our Executive Vice President, the one and only Reverend Zegary Oliver. He is really powerful. He's doing a whole series on reconciliation. And to our beloved religious leaders, 
who gave the prayer today. God bless you all. Thank bless you. you. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend Abana from Canada. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. See you. God bless everybody. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.